Hello everyone and welcome back to the Netherworld Bibliothèque. My name is Vervain and usually I do book reviews. A lot of those books are esoteric texts, uh, but sometimes I go off topic and I do something else. Um, when I do that, usually I end up talking about jewellery. So in this video, I'm going to be combining occultism or esotericism with jewellery, so two of my interests. I'm going to be telling you about how you can wear charms or talismans in a really discreet way. So if you are just a private person and you don't want other people knowing what you believe or what you practice, or for whatever reason, if you are just unable to practice your craft openly, I've got a few suggestions for how you can use charms, uh, the bead on bracelet charms specifically, like the one that was invented by troll beads, but popularized by Pandora, um, how we can repurpose these charms for magical purposes. So I'll show you on screen now an example of what I'm talking about, but I think you have the idea. Um, it's these small charms that have been really popular in the last few years. Um, Pandora have really been leading the charge. Um, so these are designed typically to celebrate a moment in your life. So um, like a birthday or an anniversary, um, a holiday, so on and so forth. Therefore, there are lots of different charms and there are plenty of companies that make them. So you could use them as they're designed to be used, or because there are so many different symbols, you can also use these charms for magical purposes. So you can either just wear them if you believe that a certain symbol or a certain color is enough to attract a particular force into your life, you can do that. Or you can enchant the item. So if you do a certain spell or ritual, charge that item with your intention, and then you can wear it. So I'm just going to give you a couple of specific examples of uh, ways that you could use these charms for magical purposes, starting with crystals. I should just say that this video is not sponsored uh, and that I will be mentioning some larger name companies just because they have good examples of what I am talking about. Um, but please don't feel compelled to purchase from these companies. Of course, you could purchase from a small business or an independent designer and I'm confident those beads would do the trick just as well. Um, but when we're talking about crystals and gemstones, I specifically want to mention troll beads because I know they have quite a large selection of natural gemstone beads. I know they've got, you know, all your usual suspects like uh, rose quartz and amethyst, um, pretty sure they've got onyx, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but I also know they have the precious stones as well. They have um, beads made out of ruby, sapphire, and I think emerald as well. So if you want to have a crystal on your person, if you believe that certain crystals attract um, certain properties or certain experiences, um, or if you, uh, again, have um, conducted a spell and now you need to wear a crystal on you as, as part of your practice, um, 12 beads, I think, is uh, the first place to look or the best place to look for these little charm bracelets, or little charms, I should say, that are um, really quite discreet. And they're part of a mainstream uh, fad or trend to be wearing these kind of bracelets. So uh, it wouldn't really draw any attention to yourself, I don't think, if you have a little crystal charm. And if someone does comment, if someone is like, oh, look, that's very pretty, um, you can just be like, yeah, thanks, I like the color, or it's my birthstone. And that shouldn't really arouse any suspicion because these bracelets are so mainstream, they're so popular, wearing one doesn't obviously shout which. So next I want to talk about color magic. And similar with different crystals, if you believe that a certain crystal has a certain property, likewise different colors are associated with uh, different experiences or different powers. Um, I mean, I think we all know why we're here. I don't need to, to talk down to you to tell you how it works. Um, so again, all of these different brands, they have different crystals, they have different enamel in you know, all colors of the rainbow. So I'm confident that between all of these different brands, you could find um, a charm that has the right color for you. So if you, once again, just want to wear that color, or you think that it will um, bring a certain experience into your life, you could do that. 
or of course you could enchant the charm and then wear it as part of your spell work and no one needs to be none the wiser. Um, and again, because they are so popular, if you have like a little, uh, you know, four leaf clover or a heart or a star, uh, these are not really obviously occult symbols. So if someone does see you wearing them, there's no reason that they would be like, oh, you're a witch, you're practicing magic. So um, I think you should be pretty safe to do that and the general public would be unsuspecting. And lastly, I want to talk about the silver charms, which I think are the most popular and I think they make up the bulk of the market. Uh, between all of the different brands that are out there, there are so many different symbols. We've got, you know, all um, the obvious ones. We've got all sorts of uh, flowers. We've got a fair range of supernatural creatures. Um, quite a few of them have like an extensive Halloween collection. I know Camellia especially has quite a nice Halloween selection. Um, so if you want to represent especially any nature deities, um, a lot of mythical creatures, I know um, tall beads, uh, older tall beads definitely had a lot of mythical creatures, I'm not so sure about now. Um, but yeah, if you want to represent a certain force of nature, a certain mythical creature, um, a certain change in the season, I'm confident that there is a bead which can represent that. Um, and then also because these beads are interchangeable, uh, it's not like the old school um, charm bracelet where they all dangled and they were all um, soldered onto the bracelet. Because these modern ones are interchangeable, you can change your bracelet. So if you, um, let's say, celebrate the wheel of the year, you could change it according to the seasons. Um, if you're doing something with the days of the week, for instance, if you have the time, you could uh, maybe change it every day um, or for each occasion. If there's, let's say you're going for a job interview and you want to attract confidence into your life, you can wear a bead that you think will attract confidence. And then on a different day when um, you're not looking to, to attract that confidence specifically, you don't have to wear that bracelet. You can uh, break it apart and remake it to suit your intentions. Um, so yeah, I just uh, wanted to pop in and just uh, talk about how we can repurpose something really mundane, something really mainstream, and uh, use it for your magical practices, but not in a really obvious way. Uh, let me know if you found this video useful, um, or if not, if I'm telling you something you already know. Uh, let me know if you uh, practice this kind of like discreet or covert magic, or if you have any other tips for how you can practice your craft discreetly. Anyway, thank you very much for stopping by and maybe I will see you next time.